All right, well, welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report, where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. Thank you so much for joining me again. The first bit of news that I wanted to talk about today, it seems as though the federal government and the FDA have launched their own sort of youth vaping prevention education program, not unlike the D.A.R.E. programs from when I was a kid. And believe it or not, I'm actually a huge proponent of this. I think that underage people should be educated about vapor products. We've all said this in the past, and I'm sure we'll all say it again in the future, but vaping isn't 100% safe. It was never intended to be 100% safe. It is a vice, and there are some, I'll be them small, but there are some inherent risks when you're consuming nicotine. And I'm all for educating people and educating youths on vapor products and nicotine consumption, but I also do think that that education and that information needs to be presented in a very honest and factual way, which unfortunately doesn't look like it's the case for this new campaign. The Real Cost is the name of the newest education campaign launched by the FDA, and they released recently on television television and across the internet, their first like 30 second commercial ad spot. And it is very over the top and very alarmist and very fear mongering. The commercial uses lots of slick CGI showing like parasites attacking your brain or something, which is supposed to be representative of like nicotine attacking your brain and infecting its way into your brain. Real over the top stuff. The commercial also shows a lot of kids and youths using vapor products, which I would like to point out, the government and the anti-vaping groups are the only ones portraying kids vaping. The only time kids will see other kids vaping on TV is because of the government. In the commercial, the narrator says it can release dangerous chemicals into your bloodstream like formaldehyde. They also throw out words there like acrolein. It can expose your lungs to acrolein. Acrolein is a very scary chemically sounding word, isn't it? A very, very fear mongering sounding word. And it's interesting the way they just threw that word into this advertisement because just saying the word acrolean in a commercial, it sounds really scary and it doesn't give the viewer the opportunity to research into acrolean. So I kind of get the feeling that the overwhelming majority of people watching this commercial aren't going to look further into things like acrolean. But if you do manage to spell it correctly and search on Google for acrolean, you'll be brought to the 2015 study that Dr. Farsalinos did that shows that things like formaldehyde and acrolean only appear in dry puff conditions of using vapor products. Dry puff conditions using a vapor product is something that no vapor does. Dry puff conditions is essentially when the wick inside of your vaporizer is dry, meaning it's not saturated with liquid. It creates a really harsh, really irritating feeling vape. You only have to have a dry hit once to realize it's something that you never want to experience again. Dry puff or dry hit conditions isn't a normal vaping condition. So they're not wrong when they mention things like formaldehyde and acrolein, but the way that it's presented in this commercial makes it seem like it's a normal everyday thing of vaping. Every time you vape, you're getting formaldehyde and acrolein into your body. When in reality, things like formaldehyde and acrolein only happen in these very, very, very rare dry puff conditions, excessive dry puff conditions, not just a dry wick, excessive dry puff conditions. The facts and how they are presented really do matter. And anybody viewing this commercial can spend five minutes on Google and pretty clearly see that they are being lied to and misinformed by the government. So yes, I'm all for educating youth and educating kids and honestly educating 
educating the public about vaping. But that education, it needs to be factual and it needs to be presented in a factual way. People can tell when they are being lied to. And of course, all of this real cost, truth campaign, awareness for children spreading is because of the epidemic that Scott Gottlieb announced last week. An epidemic that he has still not presented any data or any evidence to support. Zero. And on Saturday, Scott Gottlieb posted this on his Twitter. The FDA will forcefully address a spike in kids' use of e-cigs. All options are on the table. We have major new steps we'll take in the coming weeks. Manufacturers have a closing window to offer steps to resolve this public health crisis or we'll act unilaterally. And it's that last word, unilaterally, that really has me worried, but we're gonna get back to that in a second. Firstly, I just want to point out how unprecedented it is that the FDA is holding manufacturers accountable for what people are doing with their products. We don't hold gun manufacturers responsible when somebody dies from a bullet wound. We don't hold alcohol manufacturers responsible for alcoholism, which alcohol caused approximately 88,000 deaths in the United States between 2006 and 2010. And excessive alcohol drinking is responsible for 1 in 10 deaths in all adults aged 20 to 64. We don't hold cigarette manufacturers responsible for the 480,000 annual deaths from people using their products. We don't hold Hostess accountable for contributing to sugar and diabetes in the United States. We don't hold automobile manufacturers responsible if someone drives carelessly and causes an accident. It is truly an unprecedented move to hold the vapor industry responsible for what people do with their products. And it's that last word in this tweet, unilaterally, that really bothers me. I find that very disturbing. Unilaterally essentially means that the FDA is going to do whatever they're going to do and they don't have to ask permission from anybody. They don't have to get feedback from anybody. They don't have to get the opinions of anybody. They can just implement and execute a nationwide ban if they wanted to. Nationwide flavor ban if they wanted to. Very much in the spirit of we know what's best for you. And if the vapor industry can't fix this, then we're going to take it away from everybody. And Scott Gottlieb himself in the past has said that vapor products are an added value, an added benefit to public health, and that they can potentially get lots of smokers off of traditional tobacco. And what I find truly terrifying is he also says things like, in order to close the on-ramp, for youths experimenting with e-cigarettes, we might have to close the exit ramp for adult smokers as well. So he's essentially saying he sees the benefit to vaping, he sees that it can get smokers off of cigarettes, but in order to keep some youths from picking up vapor products, which again, according to the Royal College of Physicians, is at least 95% healthier for you. And no, that's not just some arbitrary percentage number, that's actual science. So in order to protect kids from a product that is 95% healthier than cigarettes, they're going to also restrict adult access and essentially let the smokers that haven't discovered vaping yet or haven't switched over to vaping yet just continue to smoke and get diseases and get cancer and get COPD and die. And Scott Gottlieb totally okay with that. That is not a rational or logical thing to say. That's not a rational or logical thing to think. I can't imagine what Scott Godlib's thought process is in this. At what point does this become a human rights issue? At what point when we have mountains of science and mountains of evidence and mountains of data all in favor of vaping and our government and our FDA are trying to keep us from vaping and keep us smoking cigarettes, at what point does it become a human rights issue? Do we as Americans have the right to not die of cancer? Do we have the right to not die of COPD? It's honestly just a real interesting question and I would love to get your thoughts down in the comments below. The FDA is spending hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars on anti-vaping campaigns while the known killer that is tobacco cigarettes are just given a free pass, just 
publicly available in any convenience store, gas station, grocery store across the United States. Cigarettes themselves have not been put through the rigorous scrutiny that vaping has. And I think a really interesting question to ask is, why? Ask Scott Godlib. Go on Twitter and ask Scott Godlib why. Why are we spending hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars on anti-vaping campaigns when tobacco cigarettes, the known killer, 480,000 deaths a year are just freely allowed to be on the market and be sold and be part of capitalism. And I'd like to end this 510 report on a little bit of an up note. One of my subscribers, Haram, sent me some YouTube videos that I had never seen before. And they come from a YouTube channel named Chris No Tap. And the Chris No Tap YouTube channel is predominantly like a do-it-yourself sort of DIY YouTube channel. He's got YouTube videos for how to make a humane mousetrap out of a two liter bottle or the fastest way to cook corn on the cob. And he has two videos on his YouTube now that are mostly unscientific, but do bring up some really interesting points. He sets up these little tests with cotton balls, and one of them is your body after one pack of cigarettes, and the other one using the same cotton ball experiment is your body after one month of vaping. And like I said, these aren't wholly scientific experiments he's doing, but they do generate some pretty interesting results. He's an interesting guy, and they're really interesting videos to watch. A lot of you may have already seen this, the your body vaping after one month already has like 19 million views. I had just never seen these before. I watched both of these videos and thought they were insanely interesting. So I'm gonna link down in the description below so you can check those out. And I genuinely feel like the Your Body After Vaping for One Month is a nice shareable video. And again, this is mostly anecdotal evidence. This isn't hard science. This wasn't done in a laboratory environment. There were no research papers written up. There were no research papers written up that then got peer reviewed and published, but it is a really interesting visual way to see vaping versus smoking. And once again, thank you to Haram for sending those YouTube videos my way. And I think that's where we're going to end this 510 report. As always, join CASA. It's free. It's easy and it is effective. You want calls to actions about vape legislation happening in your city or state? Join CASA. All it takes is an email. And thank you everybody for joining me once again here on the 510 Report. As Kevin Skipper used to say, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved.